How do you meet the earned money requirement if you're applying as a global talent visa holder under the settlement route, so for ILR or for an extension? Well, what I want to do is focus on particularly the position of an applicant if you're in a position where you have a company, especially a small company, and you're in this position or you have a small amount of earnings. So I've just put here this earned money requirement for settlement and for an extension of stay. So the applicant must have earned money in the UK during their last permission in the field. Uh, and that's the field in which they were previously endorsed in the global talent route if they were granted their initial application using an endorsement. So I'm thinking here particularly of the uh, Tech Nation applicants, but I've also assisted people who are are, for example, under the Arts Council route and where there's um, also an earned money requirement in certain circumstances. So let's just have a look at the position where you have a, a company, particularly a small company. Now, usually, if the money is paid to you as salary from a small company, if it's a, a tech company, then that would be the end of the analysis. In other words, the money comes from a tech company. So that's the, the end of it. In other words, you don't need to deal with source of funds beyond that. But if it's a small company and it's a one man show, like you're the only person in the company, then the question arises whether money that you've put into the company can simply be paid out to you and whether that would, whether that would qualify. So in other words, if you have savings, perhaps from another source, and you put them into your company as working capital, and then that money is paid out to you again, would that fulfill the requirement? Well, potentially not. So there's a judgment call to be made in circumstances in which the only money that's in the company that is being paid out to you in salary or dividends for that matter, comes from you, from a non-tech source. So you routing that money through the tech company may not be sufficient in all cases. Now, in some cases, I have simply uh, shown that the money has come from the company and that's been the end of it and the applications have been granted. But you might want to be a bit more careful, if, especially if it's an early stage company or the bank account has only just been secured. So in those circumstances, you might need to be a bit more careful and consider using this kind of, of evidence. So the you would show that the company has invoiced the client, that there's been a payment to the company by the client, and that the company has then paid you. So that would be sufficient by way of demonstrating origin of funds. So there'd be an invoice from the company to the client, then the client would pay that invoice. So the money would be shown as coming in to the company bank statement, so the corporate bank account, and the, the company bank statement would evidence that, and then there'd be a pay slip. So we'd see the, the full chain going right back to the client, as opposed to just going back to the company. And the evidence would be the letter from the company, so confirming that the money was earned in connection with the specialist field for which you were endorsed. Then the employment contract, now on the employment contract, not all founders have necessarily formalized their role. If they are employed, then they haven't necessarily got an employment contract. So you might want to consider formalizing arrangements before you apply for indefinite leave to remain. And then there'd be a letter from the accountant. Now that could be the, the accountant for the company, or it could be your accountant, maybe one and the same person. And that would enclose the payslip and the breakdown of the payment. If it's uh, payments of salary, then showing the PAYE element. So gross and net of tax. And the employment contract and the letter from the company would have to be signed by someone empowered to do so. In other words, a non-executive director may not be empowered to actually sign an employment contract. That's not something they would simply uh, not uh, normally be expected to do. 
So those are the kinds of considerations you could you should take into account if the money is coming from a, a company. Now there's no de minimis amount that you need to show for earnings. Um, so there have been very low sums uh, relied on where there's been a grant, as low as just over a thousand pounds. But again, you'd have the full chain to show the provenance there and that it was in connection with your specialist field where you endorsed as a founder for founder related activities. Clearly, there's limits to the earnings that you can rely on. So if you if, if you got a job outside of tech to, to pay the bills, then that money may be in a totally unrelated field in the retail sector, let's say and that the, the earnings don't count. Likewise, if there's complete circularity and the um, ultimate origin of the funds was not from, from tech, then those funds are being routed via your company, even if it is a tech company, may not be sufficient. They might be sufficient in certain circumstances, um, but one would want to ask where that money comes from. So I have helped many people to get indefinite leave to remain and extensions as well as the initial visa un under the global talent route. Uh, if you want to run your circumstances by me, I'd be delighted to help you. I have a consultation service. You can uh, select a time to speak with me from clicking on the link below. I wish you luck with your application. Bye for now.